Suppose you wanted to convert bromoethane to ethylamine. How would you do that? You would use hot ethanolic ammonia, so that's just ammonia in ethanol, and the ammonia would need to be in excess, otherwise you could get secondary and tertiary amines. Now imagine you wanted to carry out this conversion, you wanted to go from bromoethane to propylamine. How would you do that? Well, it's very different because we are increasing the carbon chain length. So in this case, we're going from two carbons up to three. So in this video, we're going to look at something called carbon-carbon bond synthesis. So we're going to look at how you can extend the carbon chain and then we'll look at what you can do with the product and then we'll come back to this problem and hopefully get to an answer. So one way to extend the carbon chain is to react halogenoalkanes or haloalkanes with cyanide ions, that's CN minus. And the way you do that is you would reflux your haloalkane with the cyanide ions in ethanol. And that's going to give you a compound called a nitrile. And you'd also get a halide ion produced as well. So the general reaction for that is here. Rx just represents the halogenoalkane. CN minus is the cyanide ion. And there's the nitrile, and it's got this functional group C triple bond N. And there's the halide ion there that's coming off the halogenoalkane. Your source of cyanide ions can be potassium cyanide or sodium cyanide. I'm going to look at the mechanism on the next slide, but just telling you now, it's nucleophilic substitution. And the reason it has to be carried out in ethanol is because if you use water as your solvent, that can also act as a nucleophile and compete with that cyanide ion, and that would actually give you an alcohol. So obviously we don't want that in this case. So if we look at a specific example now, so bromoethane with CN minus ions. So here's the reaction. CH3, CH2, Br, plus CN minus, conditions above the arrow, and there's the product, and in this case we're going to get a bromide ion produced. So what's this nitrile called? It's called propane nitrile, because it's got three carbons. And the mechanism is nucleophilic substitution. So we'll have a look at the mechanism now. So there'll be a dipole across the carbon halogen bond and the CN minus ion. We're going to show a pair of electrons on this carbon because this pair of electrons is going to be attracted to this slightly positive carbon and form a covalent bond here. So there's the extension of the carbon chain and obviously this pair of electrons getting really close to this pair of electrons is going to repel them completely onto the bromine and break that bond. So there's your products. And the nucleophile, remember this is nucleophilic substitution, is the CN minus ion because it's acting as an electron pair donor. Fairly obvious to see why this is substitution. We are replacing the bromine with this CN group. Now, it's worth pointing out at this stage that CN minus ions can also react with carbonyls. So we're talking about aldehydes or ketones. So there's again a general reaction, and we don't get a straightforward nitrile in this case, we're going to get what's called a hydroxy nitrile because it contains an OH group and that CN group that we've just seen.
In this case, the source of cyanide ions is HCN. You'll see why when we look at the mechanism. And the mechanism now, instead of being nucleophilic substitution, is nucleophilic addition. So again, we'll look at a specific example and then the mechanism. So we're going to go for propanone with HCN. And you can see that we've got one product now, not two. So that's the addition part. Two becoming one. And nucleophilic still, well, that will come out when we look at the mechanism. So we'll do that now. So very similar at the start anyway. We've got the carbonyl. The C double bond O is polar, so we've got this dipole across it. And we, same as before, show the curly arrow going from the lone pair on the CN minus ion to that slightly positive carbon. And that's going to break the pi bond, actually. The pair of electrons in the pi bond are repelled completely onto the oxygen. The sigma bond stays intact, and so we end up with this intermediate here. You can see we've actually extended the carbon chain. There's a new CC bond. Remember, we're using HCN, hydrogen cyanide, so we'll have an H plus ion, and that's going to be picked up, curly arrow from the O minus to the H plus. So there's the hydroxy group formed there. So you can see why it's called a hydroxy nitrile. And again, the CN minus ion is acting as a nucleophile because it's donating a pair of electrons. Just want to go through the name of this here. So the CN group is sort of the priority group, if you like. So the longest chain includes this. So one, two, three, or one, two, three. So it's three long, whichever way we look. This is carbon number one, because this is the main functional group. So that must be carbon number two. So hopefully you can see now why it's called 2-hydroxy, two 2-methyl, two 2-hydroxy, two 2-methyl, two one, two, three carbons in the longest chain, propane, nitrile. And I've just done a quick sketch. If you had an aldehyde, so instead of propanone, we use propanal. You would get, you'd still get a hydroxy nitrile. But in this case, let's have a look at the name. The longest chain is one, two, three, four long. So this is butane nitrile now. Carbon number one, carbon number two. There's your hydroxy group. So two hydroxy butane nitrile. So what can you do to this nitrile once it's been formed? Well, you can convert it to an amine. So we'll look at that first. So there's two ways to do this. One of them in the lab, and the other one is how industry would do it. I'll explain why as we go through. So in the lab, you take your nitrile, and you reduce it with a strong reducing agent. And the one that we're going to use is called lithium aluminium hydride and then following that you would use some dilute acid and that would give you the amine so we need four moles of reducing agent because effectively we're adding H2 H2 now the problem with LiAlH4 is it's very very expensive and so industry Try and cut costs by using hydrogen and they use a catalyst which can either be platinum or nickel and they use a high temperature and pressure so this is known as catalytic hydrogenation because we're reacting the nitrile with hydrogen now so as the reaction so instead of four separate H's we have two moles of H2 so platinum or nickel catalyst, high temperature and pressure, so put your conditions around the arrow, and there's your product. 
It's worth pointing out another reaction you can carry out on nitriles, that's hydrolysis. So you might want to turn your nitrile into a carboxylic acid. So if you did want to do that, you would reflux your nitrile in dilute hydrochloric acid. And the nitrile group is hydrolyzed, so it's broken by the water molecule from the dilute acid and we get carboxylic acid and we get ammonium chloride. So the important thing to note is that the carbon of the nitrile group becomes the carbon of the carboxylic acid group. And the same goes for hydroxynitriles. Remember we made these by reacting cyanide ions with aldehydes or ketones. So this is the general reaction. So again, two moles of water, some HCl reflux, and we get this hydroxy carboxylic acid now. Okay, so back to our original problem. How do you convert bromoethane into propylamine? So if this was an exam question, you need to make sure you're aware straight away that the carbon chain is increasing by one. So it's going to involve the use of Cn- ions. So if you want to have a think about how you would carry out this conversion, Pause the video and then when you're ready, play on and I'll go through the answer. So the first thing you'd need to do is you would react your halogenoalkane with cyanide ions. So that could be KCN or NACN reflux and it needs to be an ethanol. And we're going to get propane nitrile and a Br- ion. If you've gone for KCN there, you would just write KBr there, and similarly for NaCn gives NaBr. So once you've created the nitrile, we want to convert that to an amine. So we're doing this in the lab, so we're going to do it this way. So four moles of reducing agent. The reducing agent is lithium aluminium hydride. Don't forget your dilute acid needs to be added at the end, and we get our propane nitrile like that.